Hello friends, my name is JJ. So I am not much of a sportsman, but I am a flag boy. And so I could not help but noticing this headline in the sports section the other day. <laughs> Russia banned from using its name, comma, flag at next two Olympics. So as you may know, Russian professional athletes are quite infamous for using performance enhancing drugs and in staging elaborate government-backed conspiracies to cover it up. And as the watchdogs of international sport have gotten increasingly wise to this, they've been coming up with more and more creative and humiliating punishments to discipline the Russians. Now, the most obvious punishment would just be a straight up ban on Russian athletes from competing in international sporting competitions. But that sort of blunt vindictiveness is generally frowned upon by the big muckety-mucks of international sport. These are people who tend to be very into the idea that sport should be an inspiring tribute to the global brotherhood of man, and that otherwise decent athletes should never be denied participation by things like collective political punishment. In the entire history of the Olympics, for example, there has only been one country that was given a total ban on participation, and that was South Africa in 1970. And the justification was that South Africa's apartheid regime was itself unsportsmanlike in denying full participation to a black athletes. But still, there has to be some sort of consequence for cheaters. So in 2017, after evidence of Russian doping had become undeniable, the IOC dreamed up this unique punishment. Russian athletes who passed the drug tests could compete in the 2018 games in Pyeongchang, but they wouldn't be allowed to use any patriotic Russian paraphernalia, like flags or their national anthem or even distinctive uniforms, just lame, generic Olympic placeholders. And instead of Team Russia, they would be known simply as the Olympic Athlete from Russia Delegation, or or. You may recall that the television networks even played along with this, using the Olympic flag in place of the Russian flag on those little point counter things on the screen. And last week, the World Court of Arbitration for Sport upheld the continuation of this punishment, which will accordingly impose similar humiliations on Russian athletes for the next two Olympics, as well as the next World Cup, and various other lesser known sporting competitions. Now, though it is obviously embarrassing, this punishment has long been controversial for not being harsh enough, given it allows the Russians to continue to compete as an identifiable team. A more dramatic punishment, at least at the Olympic level, would have been to just stick the Russians in the independent Olympic athlete delegation, which is sort of Olympic limbo world often for athletes whose countries don't exist anymore. This is how the Kuwaitis were punished in 2016 after their official Olympic team was temporarily unrecognized by the IOC after some scandal with their government. The independent Olympic delegation is not to be confused with Team Refugee, by the way, which is a more formal team for athletes who are literally homeless. Anyway, given the Russian shame team, seems like it's gonna be part of international sporting culture for a while now. I was wondering if there was any precedent for this sort of thing. A national team that is like a national team, but also not. And indeed there is, Team Taiwan. Taiwan is of course an independent country, but the government of China refuses to recognize its independence for reasons and throws a big hissy fit whenever any international organization does. In order to avoid upsetting this particular diplomatic apple cart, since 1984, Taiwanese athletes have accordingly competed in international competitions as members of the Chinese Taipei delegation, which is basically a Taiwanese team that has undergone a Russian-like scrubbing of all distinguishing symbols of Taiwanese nationhood. During the Olympics, they also use a special placeholder Olympic flag and anthem during the medal ceremonies and marches and whatnot. Now, these days, a lot of Taiwanese are getting increasingly tired of pandering to Chinese sensibilities and want their athletes to compete as out and proud citizens of the nation they actually live in, instead of the made up non-country of Chinese Taipei. In 2018, Taiwan actually had a national referendum on whether to have their athletes compete openly as Team Taiwan in all international sporting competitions, but it was ultimately voted down 55 to 45, but you can see that it is a divisive topic. So yes, a lot of weird fake teams and flags in the international sporting world these days. If you've got some other examples of Taiwan Times controversies have led to weird flags or teams being present in international sports, let me know in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed this JJ bonus midweek trivia video.